Nehemiah chapter 4, be there, shout glory to God. But if you've been sure enough serving God, something like that'll hit you right in your stomach. And you know, anybody been through some stuff just trying to serve God, got lied on and talked about and ran down and had to take your money and pay the church's bills. And y'all, after a while, it's going to pay off. Right there. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse number 1. Let's get to the book. Unless you say I'm not theologically sound. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse number 1. Just give me about 15, maybe 20 minutes at the most. I'll cut you loose. Nehemiah chapter 4. Verse number one, I need your support tonight in the Holy Ghost. Verse number one, but it so happened that when Zanballot heard that we were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brother in the army of Syria and said, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in one day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish, the stones that are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him and he said, whatever they build, if even a fox goes upon it, he will break down their stone wall. Just look at somebody, tell them the enemy's underestimating you. Tell them that. <laughs> Hear, O oh God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their own heads and give them as plunder to the land of captivity. Do not cover their iniquity and do not let their sins be blotted out from before you. For they have provoked you to anger before the builders. So we build the wall. And the entire wall was joined together up to half its heights for the people had a mind had a to mind work. To work. Yeah. Everybody say the people. The people. Say it with some strength. Say the people. The people. the people. the people had a mind to work. Now it was when Sandal and Tobiah, the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored and the gaps were beginning to close that they became very angry. And all of them conspired together to come attack Jerusalem and create confusion. But nevertheless, we made our prayer to our God. And because of them, we sent or we set a watchman against them day and night. Then Judah said, the strength of the laborer is failing. And there is so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversary said, they will neither know or see anything until we come into their midst and kill them and cause the work to cease. So it was when the Jews who dwelt there came near, they told us 10 times, from whatever place you turn, they'll be on you. Verse 13, here is my verse of interest. Therefore, I, New King, says, I position, King says, therefore said I, I believe. The new King's more accurate interpretation said, therefore I positioned men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings and I set people according to their families with their swords and with their spears and bows. And I looked at a rose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord great and awesome. And fight for your brother. And everybody say, fight for your brother. And say, fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters. Fight for your wives. Fight for your houses. And it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us that God had brought their plot to nothing. 
that all of us return to the wall, everyone to his work. Look at verse 13 again. Therefore, I position men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings. And I set the people according to their families with their swords and their spears and their bows. Just do me a favor. just want to take a handful of minutes and preach to you today. Would you look at somebody and say these words with me? Say them, say strategically positioned at a low place. Look at somebody and tell them, I think I've been strategically positioned at a low place. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. One might argue, especially from a theological perspective, how it could possibly be that God, who we have been reminded consistently, is high and lifted up and his train fills the temple and that he has gone up with a shout and that he is higher and has a name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue would confess it. One might argue how is it that God would sit high and look low at his people from a point of separation. How he would station himself in a high place and position his people in a low place. Yeah, right. This particular text addresses that issue for us. And if you'll give me a handful of minutes and at least some of your support, I believe the Holy Ghost has something to say to you today. Yeah. Because I believe that there are plenty of us in the room yeah. that are really more convinced that you probably are a little more than what you really are. All right. All right. All right. Ain't really, ain't much difference between you and the homeless dude you passed by as you got off the freeway on 16th Avenue. Ain't much difference between you and him. The only real difference between you and him is found in your grandmama's hymn book that says, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound saved a wretch like me once was lost, and now I'm found blind, but now I see. One of the dangers I think that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ has run into, and I think a part of it has been with the advent of this, uh, what we have termed uh, and, and, uh, the prosperity gospel, uh, uh, and ain't nothing wrong with prosperity. I have no problem telling you I'm prosperous. I ain't got no problem telling you that. And if you got a problem with it, tough. Uh, yeah, yeah, just but, but with this prosperity gospel, I think we have given people an appetite for things that supersede their appetite for the will of God. I think I think we have dumped so much desire into people that their desire is not for the God of the riches, it's just for the riches. And just let me tell you, you can have all the prosperity you want, but prosperity can go to hell too if it's not dipped in the blood. You understand what I'm saying? There's going to be a lot of prosperous folk that hit the bottom of hell. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, and, I, and, I, and I think we've developed, we've we preached in such a way for so long that we have positioned people to desire nice things. And there's nothing wrong with desiring nice things. I desire nice things. I'm, I'm shopping the market now for me a new car. Not because the one I got is broke, just because I want another one and I can afford to buy one. You ain't got to like it. I just want another car and I work and I got the right to go buy me another car, Daddy, if I want one. I ain't going to let your church folks squash me. But watch, I will not ever let my car or my job or my influence or what God has done for me get in the way of my connection to God. I wish I had some witnesses. Because watch now, because when I get my back against the wall. I don't remind God of who I am now. I don't remind him I'm Bishop Reverend so-and-so, pastor of this and thus and so church and you know college graduate times five. I don't, I don't remind God of all of that 
test them. I don't mind God that I'm a law student and president of the Black Law Student Association and I sit amongst them. I don't mind God of any of that stuff. I remind that I'm that same joker that grew up in Black California on welfare and food stamps that used to run around the church and I wish I had six or seven people and lift up God in the beauty of holiness before I even knew what a hundred dollar bill ever looked like. I am the fella that stayed connected to God when there was no reason to stay connected to him for. When everything in my life had shut down on me and when the doctor gave up on me at the age of three and said, boy, you gonna die with sickle cell anemia. I'm still here. Uh, several years later, still preaching the gospel, still, still standing strong. Look at somebody tell him, I'm that same dude uh, that came through the fire and came through the flood and that God has sustained my life. And watch, I, we have to be careful, beloved, the impact that blessings and desires have on our consecrated lives. Some of us were fine until God started blessing us. Some of us were seeking God. We were on the altar. We were praying. We were in a scene. You couldn't beat us to church. We were like the folk that go to the club. The first ones there and the last ones to leave. And if we needed you to vacuum the floors and fold up the chairs after service before you got your little apartment with the two or three bare open mattresses that you got in there now thinking you all wonderful, we didn't have to ask you to do nothing. You get the first lady some water you didn't mind coming to the pastor's aid but look if God done gave you enough money to get a bus pass for a month and you got the nerve to get an attitude and show up late well service start at 7 so I'm going to catch the 715 bus and then see and just get there long as I get there when pastor get up like 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 you too good to hear the praise team sing y'all ain't got to say nothing to me I'm going back to my church after I'm done yeah. like you too good to hear the praise team sing or like you so wonderful that you can't say amen to somebody or after you sung your song you so anointed that you can't hear nobody else saying when we had to stand there and listen to you doing all that hollering and hooping and carrying on and act like we enjoying it. The truth of the matter is we didn't feel God the whole time you were up. You understand what I'm saying? I know you ain't gonna like that. It's tough. Yeah, I'm just gonna shut it all the way down tonight and go back to Pope Street. You watch. I think we've just gotten all wonderful and all cocky with the will of God, and we think we're more than what we really are. And we have forgotten that had it not been for the Lord who was on our side, so shall we be. Some of y'all right now are one or two cussings out from being from losing your mind. You one or two paychecks from being homeless. You want to Y'all don't hear me today. You you right around the corner from being broke, busted, and disgusted. And I refuse to come and sit in the presence of God that has everything and that can do anything and act like I don't need him and abandon my desire for him. Look at somebody and tell them I really just want God. Tell them that I really want God. Thank God for the choir and thank God for the preacher. And I love having good professional church, but at the end of the day, what I want is God. I thank God for the house and I thank God for the car but if I don't ever get another house and if my car goes flat tomorrow and the radiator blows up while I'm driving down Interstate 10 as long as I got King Jesus I wish I had a witness in it then. I don't need nobody else do me a favor look at somebody tell them what I really want is God what I uh, I didn't come here to church today just because Pastor Mary's having an anniversary. Thank God for it. I did come to celebrate with her. But if they would have told me God wasn't showing up, I'd have stayed at home too and sent my offering through the mail. I ain't got no help today. I came because I need a supernatural encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ because there is some stuff in my life that if God don't do it, if God don't turn it around, if God don't fix it, I'm going to be on the back end of a burden the rest of my life. There's some stuff that if God does not deliver, I'm going to have trouble getting into heaven. There's some stuff that if God don't turn around, my enemies will take over me and I will become captive in the land of my liberty. Look at somebody tell them what I really want is God, but I really want. That's why you ain't got to tell me to clap. I'm working on it. Hold on. That's why you ain't got to tell me to open my mouth. You ain't got to tell me to twirl, jump, and dance. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and everything that he's done for me. I guess I gotta just kick over sacred cows and bust in the door to y'all today. You know? And every time I think of his goodness to me and where I was when he found me, don't get it confused. I am here because he was there. 
Look at somebody and tell them, I am here because he was there. I don't know where your there was, but I bet you are here because he was there at the crack house when you were high, uh, at the porno bookstore when you were still trying to figure that stuff out, yeah? Uh, uh, at the welfare office when you didn't have enough money to pay your bills. I am here because he was there. The message of salvation, I said it the other day, I don't know where I was, but I said it the other day. The message of salvation is not us coming to God. The, the message of salvation is God coming to us. It's God that is so rich and wonderful, stepping down through 40 and two generations, through the womb of a virgin girl, and saying the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The message of salvation ain't about you coming into his presence, it's about him creating a presence for you to come into. The message of salvation ain't about you worshiping him. The message of salvation is about him giving you a destiny so that you have a reason to worship at all. The message of salvation ain't about people with breath praising God. The message of salvation is about the breath that he breathed into you so that you could have breath to breathe to be qualified as one of the people. I wish I had some witnesses here that would praise God anyway. Look at somebody and tell them I just really want God. I really I really want God and I just wish we would get to the place where we get a bunch of people in the house of God that are passionate about the presence of God and that are mature enough in the Holy Ghost to push aside their flesh and enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Do me a favor and look at somebody. I tell them I came here for God. Tell them I came here for God. I want wonderful things but every now and then because I'm a worshiper and my will pastor has to always be subject to his will always, pastor Denard, it always has to be subject to his will pastor Ransom every now and then the will of God prescribes for me that I am positioned in a low place. And, uh, every, every, every now and then, God, you go check the word out, position, it's, it's a military term. It's, it's a military term like a commander giving a military order to a junior or an enlisted officer. And he tells them your station is to hold the low ground. Uh, let me let me see. Let me see. Let me let me try to come into this another way. Um, 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 um. Every now and then, uh, God will allow the enemy to afflict you with cancer and tell you hold your ground. Every now and then, God will let your bills be overdue for months after months and tell you to look at somebody. Tell them hold your ground. Hold, Hold your ground, hold your ground. I know it ain't going the way you want it to, but every now and then the commander, the king of kings, the lord of lords will position you at a low ground, put you in a mess of a marriage and tell you don't you dare get divorced. Hold your ground. Look at somebody tell them hold your ground, hold your ground. Tell somebody hold your ground, hold your ground. Oh, come on, look at somebody and tell them, hold your ground. I know you, I know you think we are, we tricked you into coming into this salvation. Because we used to sing a song that said, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Lord Jesus, I feel like preaching. And, and every now and then, God, in the process of him building his house, will order people to the low ground. Every now and then, he has to have some people that don't mind pastoring the 15 people while everybody else driving around in Bentley's with 15,000 people. And he just commands you to hold your ground. He has to have some people that stay in a building this size, but you started before the dude up the street that just built a brand new church. And then a couple blocks down, from him that got a big old church and people drive by your church every day and you preaching, y'all ain't gonna say nothing preaching the same gospel probably fasting a little bit more probably praying a little bit more you ain't got to say nothing but I ain't scared of you at all because there's some of you in here right now that are upset and 
name it right now because you know you fasting. You know you praying. You know you living right. You're doing everything that God has told you to do. But you can't keep a musician at your church that's worth a nickel worth a dog meat in a 40 acre field. You can't get your membership to grow if you put y'all and you've been wrestling with ministry and fighting just trying to get the usher board to show up in the right uniform or the choir members to just sing together and God is screaming in the back of your spirit saying hold your ground sir hold your ground man because weeping may y'all endure for a night but your will come in the morning preach the rest of it later because I just got a green light from God. Look at somebody tell them hold your ground. You may be burning and bruised. Pastor Mary you may have to preach 21 more years and never see the building filled every Sunday but woman hold your ground. Pastor McNeil you may have to preach the gospel and they keep giving you trouble in the jurisdiction but hold your ground. Pastor DeLarge you might have to keep preaching and be prepared and be compared to the people that came before you but hold your ground. They might keep leaving your church and dogging you out but the Bible says I said the Bible says that he positioned some people at the low ground. Pastor Ransom, some people got to hold the low ground. Pastor Neville, I feel some people got to hold the low ground. See, you can put weak people on the high ground. They always got to be out front. They always got to lead the soul. They always got to have their name written on the program. They always got to have a special seat. They always got to be ushered in church and ushered out of church. But I believe I got some people that don't mind handling the low ground. Is there anybody in here that don't mind handling the low ground? And you got enough character and you got a strong enough prayer life to stay right there until God turns it around. Will you do me a favor? I gotta go to the house, y'all. God bless you today. God bless you today. But will you look at somebody and tell them neighbor, tell them neighbor, be not weary in well doing. Be not weary in well doing. For in due season, in due season, you shall reap. If you don't faint, tell somebody, hold your ground. Might be pain in your heart, tears in your eyes, but hold your ground. Tell somebody, be thou steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For your labor, your labor, your labor is not in vain. You might not have no money, but hang on in there. You might be sick in your body, but hang on in there. Trouble all around you, but hang on in there. The old folks say, trouble in my way. Gotta cry sometimes, lay awake at night, but that's all right. Tell somebody, that's all right. Jesus, hey Jesus, I said Jesus, we'll fix it after a while, because there's one thing you got to understand about the low ground, is that the low ground is a springboard to the high ground, I said the low ground is a springboard to the high ground, eyes haven't seen Ears haven't heard, neither has it in her. to the hearts of man, the wonderful things that God has prepared for them that are hanging there and handle the low ground. I dare you to tell somebody, keep on keeping on, keep on fasting, keep on praying. The Lord will, the Lord will, the Lord will. Tell somebody, the Lord will, because in God, the quickest way to go up 
It said, get down. I said, in God, the quickest way to go up is to get down. Ask your neighbor. Look at him in the face and say, can you get out? Can you get out? I know you want a new car, but can you get out? I know you're tired of your apartment, but can you get out? I know you want some more money, but can you get out? I know you're tired of being single, but can you get down? I know you're tired of working in the ministry and feeling unappreciated, but can you get out? Ask somebody. Can you get down? Because if you get down, one of these old mornings, it won't be long. The Lord will. Lord. I said the Lord will raise you up. And when God raises you up, you'll be able to say, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Plant my feet, plant my feet on higher ground. The reason why the enemy is attacking you while you're on the low ground is because he don't think that you gonna hold your ground. But tell somebody, hold your ground, hold your ground. If you gotta cry. Cry, but hold your ground. If you gotta dance, dance, but hold your ground. If you gotta be weary, be weary, but hold your ground. And know that weeping, I said weeping, I said weeping, might endure for a night, but your will. Do I got a witness here? That know that joy will, that joy will, that joy will come in the morning. One more thing, one more thing. Good evening, y'all. Good evening, y'all. Good evening, y'all. I'm going to the house. Good evening, y'all. Pastor, thank you for letting me come preach your anniversary. But let me tell you one more thing. Lift up. Your head, all oh, your gates, and be lifted up. You everlasting doors, and the King of Glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come in. God bless you today. God bless you today. Walk over to somebody and tell them, hold your ground. Hold your ground. Hold your ground. There's a miracle right there. There's deliverance right there. There's a breakthrough right there. Clap your hands and sing it.
Oh, <laughs> 